Between 1957 and 1968, Johnny Cash did dozens of concerts at prisons. The shows paid little, if anything at all, and an audience of prisoners doesn't buy many records. Cash was struggling in his career at that time. So why did he do all these prison shows? And how did he end up recording a concert record at one of them? Folsom Prison. In this video, we'll talk about the Johnny Cash at Folsom Prison album. How was it conceived? What happened at the show? And what did it mean for Johnny Cash and for country music? If you dig this video, please click like and subscribe. It's a huge help. Johnny Cash became aware of Folsom Prison while serving in the U.S. Air Force Security Service. In 1953, his unit watched Crane Wilbur's 1951 film Inside the Walls of Folsom Prison. The interest this would kindle in him would be career-defining. Johnny Cash wrote Folsom Prison Blues and it was released as his second single on Sun Records in December of 1955. It climbed to number four on the country charts. Unsurprisingly, the song became a hit among the prison population. Of course, it was written from the perspective of an inmate. Cash started getting letters from incarcerated people imploring him to perform for them. And you know, they say Cash believed in redemption, that all a person needs is a chance. Johnny empathized with people on the outside of society. He probably felt a bit like one himself, lambasted by the press, wrestling with his own demons, and in a sense, fighting for his own life as an artist. He saw elements of himself in the prisoners, and that showed in his music. John had a real feeling for the down and out for the prisoners, for anybody like that. He came from very humble beginnings in Arkansas. So even though he acquired a lot of things in life, he still felt for those people and he made it very obvious too. He was so real with it, and that's what brought him to prisons. So two years after the release of Folsom Prison Blues in 1957, Johnny Cash performed his first prison concert for the inmates at Huntsville State Prison in Texas. The prisoners loved him. Energized by the enthusiastic reception, Cash performed at a series of prisons over the next decade. On New Year's Day 1958, Johnny Cash even performed at the notorious San Quentin State Prison in California for the first time. This was happening during a period when Cash was having limited commercial success. You see, Cash had been struggling with drug problems. He also kept drawing negative headlines and publicity for everything from getting busted smuggling pills in from Mexico, to open infidelity, to trespassing. He was even being harassed by hate groups. Cash was looking for a way to revitalize his career and ultimately, I believe he wanted to regain control of his own narrative. With new Columbia producer Bob Johnston at the helm, Cash was finally able to get the label to greenlight something he'd been wanting to do for years, a live concert album recorded at a prison. Johnson was as enthusiastic about the idea as Cash was, and so he wrote to both San Quentin State Prison and Folsom Prison. Folsom was the first to respond. So in January of 1968, Johnny Cash and his band, the Tennessee Three, prepared to record Johnny Cash at Folsom Prison. Reverend Floyd Gressett was pastor of Avenue Community Church in Ventura, California, which is where Johnny Cash often attended services. Reverend Gressett also counseled inmates at Folsom, and he had connected Johnny with prisoners for a series of conversations. So he was the perfect choice to help facilitate the concert. On January 10th, 1968, Johnny Cash and June Carter checked into the El Rancho Hotel in Sacramento, California, along with the Tennessee Three. Supporting acts Carl Perkins and the Statler brothers also checked into the hotel. The group would rehearse for two full days in advance of the show, which was really unusual. They tried out different combinations of players on different songs. It seems like Cash really wanted to get the best possible performance. On January 12th, the day before the show, California Governor Ronald Reagan stopped by the rehearsal to show his support. On Saturday, January 13th, Johnny Cash and his group performed twice for the inmates at Folsom, once at 9.40 a.m. and once at 12.40 p.m. Both shows opened with Carl Perkins performing his hit Blue Suede Shoes. The Statler brothers performed their hits Flowers on the Wall in this old house, and Cash then came out and muttered, Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. The audience went wild as instructed, and the band launched into Folsom Prison Blues. Both shows are solid sets comprised of songs about prison and outlaws, introspective sad songs, and a few funny novelty songs from his Everybody Loves a Nut album. Between tracks, he kids around and gives shout-outs to the prisoners. June Carter joined in on duets of Jackson and Give My Love to Rose. The final song on both shows was Greystone Chapel. 
The song was penned by a prisoner named Glenn Shirley, who had no idea his song would be played that day. In 1995, Cash told Life magazine, The night before I was going to record at Folsom Prison, I got to the motel and a preacher friend of mine brought me a tape of a song called Greystone Chapel. He said a convict had written it about the chapel at Folsom. I listened to it one time and I said, I've got to do this in the show tomorrow. So I stayed up and learned it. And the next day, the preacher had him in the front row. I announced, this song was written by Glenn Shirley. It was a terrible, terrible thing to point him out among all those cons, but I didn't think about that then. Everybody just had a fit, screaming and carrying on. After the show, Glenn met Johnny Cash, and they stayed in touch and eventually became friends. Johnny helped Glenn Shirley get moved to a minimum security prison, then got the songwriter a record deal with Nashville's mega label in 1970. And while he was still behind bars, Glenn was actually able to record a live performance for an album from prison. Shirley was released in 1971 with Johnny Cash meeting him at the gates of the prison. He got established in Nashville, again with Cash's help, and toured as a supporting act for Johnny Cash's tour. But sadly, his casually violent statements and behavior caused Cash to eventually dismiss Glenn Shirley from his tour and distance himself from him. Glenn Shirley's life went downhill until he passed away tragically in 1978. Johnny Cash paid for the funeral. In the end, most of what we hear on the finished album is from the 9.40 a.m. show. Only two songs, Give My Love to Rose and I Got Stripes, are from the second concert. Apparently, the band gave their all in the first concert, and the second was considered not quite as good. If you want to hear both performances, including the banter between songs, as well as nine rehearsal recordings, check out the 5LP At Folsom Prison box set from Record Store Day 2018. Speaking of records, it took Columbia Records four months to complete and press the album. Cash had a number two country single with Rosanna's Going Wild, which was released right before the prison concerts were recorded, but Columbia still didn't do much to promote the album. Regardless, it was a smash hit across all kinds of listeners. The album resonated with many people because it captured the raw emotion and energy of Cash's performance as well as the audience's response. The songs on the album spoke to the struggles and hardships faced by many people, including those who were incarcerated, and it provided a powerful expression of empathy and solidarity. The success of Johnny Cash at Folsom Prison helped break down barriers between different kinds of audiences, and it, it brought country music to a wider audience. It also contributed to the popular image of Cash as a rebel and outsider, the man in black who sympathized with the struggles of ordinary people and used his music to speak truth to power. The Folsom Prism album spiked interest in Johnny Cash. In 1969, he was a huge star again, selling more than 6.5 million albums. Folsom Prism Blues, the single, charted on the Billboard Hot 100 and the country charts. Sun Records put crowd noise over their older recording of Get Rhythm and re-released it to capitalize on the wave of popularity. ABC offered Johnny Cash's own TV show as a result of the popularity of the album. Johnny Cash went on to do a few more prison albums and they were by far his most successful live records. A Boy Named Sue from San Quentin was a huge hit, peaking at number two on the US pop charts. He played a show at Ostrecker Prison, Sweden in 1972 and released the accompanying live album the following year. Johnny Cash testified before Congress in 1979 about prison reform and the conditions faced by inmates in the United States. During the testimony, Cash spoke about his experiences performing for inmates in prisons across the country and the impact that music can have on their rehabilitation and mental health. He also highlighted the overcrowding and understaffing issues that many prisons were facing. Cash urged Congress to take action to address these issues. Playing at Folsom Prison in 1968 may have revitalized Johnny Cash's career, but it was also an honest and heartfelt expression of his kinship with and support of those who were downtrodden. If you dug that video, check out this one about Woodstock or this other one, which is also fantastic. It was selected for you by a team of robots. Seriously.